everyone and welcome to today's video. So I'm in the greenhouse, I'm in my garden. So if you followed me on Instagram, you'll have seen the last few weeks I have been totally rearranging my garden. I had this mad idea to move a couple of my raised beds so they're all together, thinking it would only be a couple of hours and in fact it took about eight days. So today I am going to be making myself a new gardening apron. I have been wearing the same apron for all sorts over the last few years. So here it is, well and truly worn, well and truly used, served its purpose. It has got emulsion on it, wood stain on it, it's got builder's cork stuck to it, wood whack, wax dye on it, you name it, it's got it. And it's like a full, full size apron, but I always wear it like that. But seriously, if I've got a nice pretty garden, I think I need nice pretty apron so what I'm thinking of doing is I have got an old quilt that used to be on one of my children's beds many years ago and they haven't been used since and they've just been really rolled up in a bag in storage so I thought let me get these used so the idea is because it's double-sided I mean it's not an antique or anything like that and I've, what I've had to do is cut it in half a single single quilt but it wouldn't fit in the washing machine and there's no way I was paying 16 pound to take it to the laundrette so I've just cut it in half and I've managed to wash one and then wash another one so they're both washed and because it's double sided pretty fabric on one side or pretty fabric on both sides I'm going to use this I think this will probably be the main this pretty ditzy print and then with the other side I'm going to make myself a nice deep pocket I'm just going to make a half penny because uh, that's all I ever wear anyway a nice deep pocket maybe a little section to put my phone in a section for my snips and maybe a section to put my garden gloves in and then obviously it'd be nice and pretty around the garden so it should be a fairly simple project so let's do some sewing So here's a reminder of the apron I've always worn. It's like I said in the intro, it served its purpose, but it, you know, if I'm gonna have a pretty garden, I need a pretty new apron or pinny as I like to call it. And I've always worn it, folded over at the waist. So I'm just literally gonna take the measurements from as you can see it now and shorten it slightly. I don't want it below my knees. I just want it above my knees so it's not in the way. This is purely a pretty gardening apron. If I want to do any painting or decorating, I will put this one back on, no fear. So obviously I want to create a nice deep pocket to put my gloves in. Now these gloves, little tip, if you've got small hands like I have, I buy children's gloves, children's garden gloves. They are half the price of adults gloves and they fit me perfect. So a little tip there, if you even, these, these are the small children's gloves, but there's also medium children's gloves. So, you know, it's worth looking at the children's gloves before you fork out on expensive gloves. So here I am just putting in my phone and obviously I want it nice and snug so it doesn't slide out when I'm bending over and crack and you know, the usual compartment for my gloves and a compartment for some string and maybe some snips. So I'm definitely going to use the ditzy print for the main and then the nice patchwork effect for the pocket. So first things first, I have to work out my measurements and just be brave and cut into it. I was thinking of using that lovely scalloped edge, but obviously it only goes around one side, so it wouldn't, wouldn't look right with it just at the bottom. So I decided to cut the scallop edge off and trim all the edges in some pink binding, which I thought got quite pretty. And then for the waistband ties, I've just got some leftover double gauze, just sitting there, not doing anything on the shelf. Again, it's pink, so I thought that would be perfect.
So using my old pinny as a template, I'm just folding over the hem just so I can see where I want it to lay on my legs. So obviously this is quite a long one. I don't want my new one to be this long. And again, just folding it over where I generally do. And then I can take the measurements and then transfer those measurements using a heat erasable pen onto the fabric and then cut it out ready for sewing. So off goes the scalloped edge and I'm just making sure I've got all my sides nice and neat and even using my ruler, square everything off. Using my rotary cutter to go through the quilted fabric and yeah I'm quite happy with how that's looking and I just think the square edges on the bottom a little bit too severe so I decided you, you will see shortly that I'm going to round off those corners as well but here I am just marking out placement and size of my pocket taking the measurements and then just finding a nice piece on the reverse side on a, another piece of the quilt just to make the pocket I just chose a random piece that just looked like the patchwork cut it all out and then make sure I've got the sizes right it's going to fit my phone it's going to fit my gloves and maybe some string and some snips or something obviously it's got to hold all the things that I would need when I'm wandering around the garden So I was just thinking that I didn't like those sharp angles as I said earlier on the pockets and on the base or the hem of the pinny so I just took the reel of my bias, used that as a template to just round off the corners there and I did exactly the same on the pocket just to soften the edges and also make it easier when I'm adding the bias. I wanted something that was an easy project so I thought if I had rounded corners then that would be super simple to do.
So when I'm sewing bias on, I always like to sew the right side of the bias to the wrong side first, and then when you come to sew the second side on the right side, you can control how neat it looks. And I just think you get a better get a better finish. And I just clipped around the corners there because obviously it's going around the corner, and then top stitch the second part of the bias, and then added the top edge as well. So simply repeat the same process for the main pinny. So again, bias binding stitched wrong on the wrong side of the pinny. Then clip any curves and then turn it over onto the right side, pin it down and top stitch. And you can, as you obviously as you're sewing your bias down, you can control how neat it looks because you're working from the right side. If you did it the other way, you can't always see how the, how the, how the main part is going to look. So this is why I always do it this way. So just, just double checking the placement of where I want my pocket to be, make sure it's central and I'm just pinning roughly where the phone is going to go. I'm going to have the phone in the middle and I want it snug so I'm going to stitch on either side of those central pins which will make it nice and snug. All stitched, test it out, perfect. So onto the waistband, it was the, I just literally picked a, a, a measurement of how broad I wanted my waistbands to be and uh, just literally cut as much as I could get out of the scrap. I just cut really long lengths, stitched them together in the middle. It's best to have too long and then you can trim the length at the end rather than having them too short. And I like to be able to tie my pinny all the way around the back, cross it over and then tie it back at the front. So I wanted them fairly long. And I just again stitched the waistband to the wrong side to start with and then flipped it all over onto the right side, stitched those two ends together there, left a little gap so I could turn them through. Once they were turned through, poke the corners out nice and neat and then finish with the top stitching all the way around to finish the waistband.
So all stitched, all pressed. There we go, perfect. What do you think? I think it's turned out really well. I'm pleased with it. Really pretty compared to the other one. I'll quickly remind you what the other one looked like. Much better. So let's test it out. Fawn, most important. I wanted it to be snug so it didn't fall out when I'm bending and that isn't gonna fall out, but not too snug that I can't get my hands in and get it out, but it's not swimming about. Compartment for string, compartment for my gloves. Far too pretty to do the gardening in, but much better. I hope you've enjoyed watching today's video and me making my pretty quilted pinny and also a look around my newly made over garden. So thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.